What you're trying to do is you're trying to grab attention and evoke emotion. If they're a bright colour that's uh, different from reality, it immediately says, I'm not trying to make this a naturalistic representation. This has got some other symbolic um, notion. That's how colour's used in nature, colour's used as a signal. In his studio in Bath, Sculptor John Buck makes work deeply connected with nature. Each sculpture calls on our imagination to question what they are and what they mean. John's sculptural language explores our relationship with art, culture, science and the natural world. And the making process is vital to his unique approach to colour and pattern. I suppose the process I use starts with drawing. Then I can quickly transfer that into a sort of linear sculpture. I can be much more fluid. I can articulate it through space. So this piece I might want to sort of rear up like that. I might have to change the centre of gravity. Or looking at it now, I think it looks quite interesting. Inverted. Everybody's diverse and has all sorts of ideas, but I think there are some basic, uh, basic delights in vision, just as there's basic delights in, um, in sound and, in, and taste and all the other senses. Um, I think one tries to stumble across them through the making process. A long-term collaboration with Pangolin Editions enables John to experiment with innovative new colouring techniques. Recalling the dog achieves its intensity by having its layers of colour stripped back and polished. Whereas black stickers on marked cat will reveal its pattern. Everywhere else in our modern world we've used colour. Plastics particularly brought it into our interior design, clothes. Painters obviously use it, filmmakers use it. Why don't sculptors use it? Alexander Calder said that uh, he loved red so much he'd like to paint every sculpture red. And I think I feel a bit like that, that red seems to grab people and, and evoke emotion like no other, no other colour. Other than that, I think what I'm trying to use is mostly primary colours so that they contrast with each other. My, using my patterning, it gives me an opportunity to use more than one colour. From resin to patinated and painted bronze, John's work has evolved from highly figurative to abstract form. His treatment of surface has undergone a similar journey using imprinted motif and drawn line. I made a piece uh, of a woman, which I call Primal Woman. And as with the uh, mitochondrial DNA, we carry a marker within us from the female line. And so I thought, well, yeah, that's really interesting. And, and so I can have a simpler form, but I can carry a narrative through the marking. It 
Incised lines travel the surfaces, lending emphasis and poetry to his forms. The lines gradually become a lexicon of symbols and glyphs. These glyphs I've made specially for this piece. I think for me that symbols are the abstraction from reality, stripping away that that's superfluous, emphasising the thing that's important. And then those became the sculptures themselves. So the pieces you can see in the background are very much like the glyphs that I put on the surface of the sculpture. So these then become the sculpture. Art is open-ended. These things uh, have to be interpreted. And of course, in pre-literate societies, it would have been a great technical innovation to be able to leave your mark rather than everything being oral. And um, it's great to be part of that, isn't it? And I think what I'm trying to do is get from signal to symbol. So that uh, it comes from the way that we uh, operate in the world, the way that we see things, the way we respond to things. We're coded to pick up pattern. We're, we're, we're coded to make um, order out of chaos. We like pattern, but we like pattern that is with hard edges. We like abstractions that uh, start and finish. We like contrast. Our minds are built to pick up on that pattern. And it feels good. It, it, it's celebratory. And I like the ambiguity of, of abstraction, because it gives you, as the maker and the viewer, opportunity to invest your own sense of um, self onto the thing that somebody else has made. And that's the exciting thing about art. John's drawn images have the illusion of sculptural form. A little bit like magic. So a bit like the surface of my sculpture, this has left me with the main object, the field, which has been defined in the spaces, and then beyond it, the ground. Beasts, birds and bodies have provided John with a constant personal narrative and found universal parallels in prehistoric and African traditions. Instead of the woman holding the bird, the bird and the woman become conflated, so they're one and the same thing. I didn't discover until later that um, in prehistoric Europe, uh, bird-headed goddesses were very prevalent. And so it was almost as if I was stumbling on something ancient, with, which was a natural thing to do. And that's why I think the process of making is so, um, ex not just exciting, but necessary to the way we, we discover great forms or interesting forms or beautiful forms. And it's not just about an aesthetic pleasure, it's, it, it's got to be relevant. For me, it's as much about a language about ourselves as it is about the natural world. That's what I think that uh, my, my art is about, really. I'm trying to make people interested in it, but at the same time, they don't have to use just their conscious brain. They use their gut reaction. They, they either like it or, or hate it, you know, and uh, it seems to be those two camps are quite uh, well-defined. Mm -hmm.